For this week's Technique of the Week, we're going to be showing you how to get fire brick on the inside of a fire pit without having to go back and stick them on. It should save you a lot of time. But first, I got a story for you. In the early part of the 19th century, there was a magician named Harry Houdini who was arguably the best magician that had ever lived, or certainly the best of his time. Most of you have probably heard of him. During his prime, he issued a challenge. Harry said, take me to any prison and put me in any jail cell in any country and I'll escape in just a few moments. Now he had done this trick many times before, but once something went really wrong. As he entered the jail cell in street clothes, the heavy metal door you know, clanged shut behind him and he quickly took out you know, the concealed piece of metal to pick the lock. But something seemed wrong with this particular door. He worked and worked for 30 minutes and got nowhere. An hour passed, he still couldn't open this door. He labored two more hours, then finally the greatest magician of all time collapsed in frustration and fell down against the door because it wouldn't unlock. And when he fell against that door, it swung open. You see the guard that put him in the jail cell forgot to lock the door. So he was trying to unlock a door that was already unlocked. But in his mind, it was locked. And that's all that it took to keep him from opening the door and walking out of the jail. There's a lot of times in this industry that if you can feel trapped and stuck and you work your butt off like Harry did trying to get the door open and you do everything right and you thought that was right, but something still goes wrong. Maybe it's because you had the wrong product. You know, maybe it's because nobody explained how to do it in the first place. Maybe you didn't get the support you needed during the project. When I was contracting, I went through all these same things and I screwed up a lot of jobs and had to figure out how to fix it. It's kind of like that commercial from Farmers Insurance that they always play. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. Uh, this is the big reason why I started Decree because I love this industry and I want to see it prosper. I wanted to help get the right stuff in people's hands for their jobs and to give them the support they needed to make the jobs run as smooth as possible. You know, concrete's hard enough the way it is. Uh, finding the support that you need shouldn't have to be. We would really love the opportunity to help you in any way we can. Uh, thanks for watching, and here comes the next tip. Hi, I'm Jason Geyser, and I'm really excited for you guys to be here this week with me on Technique of the Week. Uh, this is going to be a great, a great one. Um, it's going to save us a lot of time. Um, out in the field uh, from when we're doing fire pits and stuff. Everybody knows fire pits are like the hottest thing, you know, right now. The hottest thing, no pun intended, I guess. When I was doing these, we always had to go back and I either had to hire a mason or try to, you know, put these things, uh, these fire brick, you know, on the, uh, the fire pits and hang them more to the back of them and put them, stick them on the, the fire pit after we poured them. Um, and the reason we do this is because the heat that a fire generates uh, is is so hot that it can pop the concrete, and you know we've had problems with that in the past. So that's that's why we uh, put the fire brick on the inside. Uh, but just recently, we've developed a way to add the fire bricks on the uh, the actual silo tube that we're going to use uh, before we pour, and then let the concrete lock them in. It's important that we keep a nice flat surface here, even if the uh, the silo tubes cut crooked. We're just going to stack them around as tight as you can get them. Now at the end here, this isn't going to come out exactly perfect with our bricks, so we have a little a little piece that we've already cut that fits in there. So to fasten these fire brick to the sauna tube, we're going to take some banding, just some regular little banding. Now obviously you have to have some type of bander to be able to do this. Um, what I've done is cut these uh, a good, you know, foot or so longer than what they need to be, so we have room to do it. Uh, Brett's going to be helping us today. Brett's one of our uh, workers at our um, at our Orville location. How long have you been with us? Uh, this will be my fifth year. F fifth year. Excellent dude, man. He he helps us out and does does a great job here. So he's going to be helping today. He's going to show you the skills. When we pull this thing out of here, obviously it's going to loosen up a little bit. So I'm actually going to take something, uh, some of these shims. I got a, sc a screwdriver, and while there's tension on this bottom one, I'm gonna go ahead and put these in because it's just gonna be a little bit easier. So we're just gonna take this and pry this out. 
a little bit. So that's that, and then we're gonna go, um, I'm gonna go around the back here, and we're gonna do the same thing. Just put another, another shim in there. So once this is done, we can flip this over and, uh, and the bricks won't, are gonna fall there except for that one we had to cut. So now, now we can pour this thing and this be the top, uh, top of the concrete and our other concrete will be out here. Well now we're at the job site and we got the, um, we got it actually installed here. All we're gonna do is we add uh, some three foot pins to help hold it up. And we put this fire ring uh, around here with a rock face liner, the same rock face liner we're using on the rest of the patio. And one of the things I, I wanna do to the top of this is just tape the top of this. That way when we're pouring this and we have our color hardener and release agent and stuff, that way it doesn't get, get these, cause this part of the fire brick will be seen. So the key to doing these fire pits is uh, like a lot of times is just filling it up evenly around there. So we're just gonna keep shoveling evenly around the whole thing. What we're gonna do is, I mean, you could use a utility knife or like a sawzall or something like that, but it's, the concrete's set up enough where I can cut this uh, sauna tube out of here. You can tell that the fire pit uh, filled in real nice. It really came out good. The uh, the pie shape that this creates in the back um, kind of allows the concrete to go in there and uh, kind of lock everything together. Also, by creating this, uh, you know, lip, you're pouring the concrete underneath these, so that's kind of helping to hold those up. Now, what we'll do next is fill fill this up to about you know this level right here with uh, some type of stone, and that'll allow the, the fire pit to drain and also protect so this concrete doesn't get um, any of the. You know, the fire's not hitting that. So that's our technique of the week. And if anybody has any techniques or tips they'd like to share, we, we'd love to hear them. And thanks for joining us and have a, have a great rest of the week.